How's it going gamers, RebelX here in the War Room and today we're looking at The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 1. The Witcher 3 is such a large game, it's going to take quite a few gameplay tips and tricks vids to cover this game. But in the first video we're going to do, we're going to cover over some of the abilities that you should upgrade first playing as Geralt. But also too is that what do those white question marks mean on your minimap? What do they hold in store for you? How to get the most bang out of your buck when you're trading with merchants and blacksmiths? So let's get into that right here, right now. Alright gamers, now let's first go over those white question marks on your map. Now these are places of interest. These places hold special type of enemies, but also hidden treasure areas. Now, the variety of these things differ. The one, the first one you should think about is Place of Power. These are these power stones that give you a boost in your uh, magical abilities, but also give you an ability point to use. Monster nests, where monsters may dwell. Abandoned towns. Bandit camps, or just abandoned camps in general that hold a lot of treasure. And finally, buried treasure. But let's first go over the Place of Power first. Alright gamers, now places of power, the, these things are actually power stones. These stones give you a boost in your magical ability depending upon the symbol in the stone, but also too is that they give you an ability point to spend. Now keep in mind, some enemies may be guarding these places, some high powered enemies, some weak ones. Either way, clear them out quickly because these power stones are extremely important to upgrade Geralt. Now when you finally do clear out enemies and you use the stone, the, the ability points I recommend you spend first are on your combat and on your magic. Alchemy you can do a little bit later, but first and foremost, Geralt starts off very weak in this game. I recommend you increase the speed of your attacks and your Arld, which is this tele telekinetic burst of energy you see that we used earlier on in the game. Now, the benefactor of upgrading your speed and your swordsmanship, you can attack multiple enemies simultaneously and kill them very quickly before they can attack you. This is an extremely important ability, especially at the beginning of this game, because you're just going to be outnumbered all the damn time by wolves, ghouls, and even bandits. The faster you can swing your sword and take these enemies down, the longer you're going to live and the better chance you're going to have in clearing out these places even faster. But also too is that your telekinetic Arl ability, which allows you to push enemies away, that's an extremely powerful ability. Combining that with the speed increase in your swordsmanship, you can clear out enemies very quickly. As you see right here, we're fighting a bunch of ghouls right now. I just used that telekinetic burst. It gives them, it backs them off. It disorients them for a couple seconds, allowing me to move in and swipe and kill them very, very quickly. Now, when you take on high-powered enemies with that telekinetic burst, one of two things will happen. The first one is you'll knock them back, they'll be disoriented, but the more powerful ability you want to go for is that once you've upgraded this ability, when you push enemies back, it will knock them on their back. It doesn't matter if they're at, at full health or half health or whatever, you can move in and instant kill them as you just saw me do that to that wolf. Alright gamers, now let's talk about camps. Now camps now, uh, for bandit camps and abandoned camps, hold a treasure trove of items. Now all swords, all armor should go straight to selling to blacksmiths. All other items should go selling to merchants. The reason why is because merchants will offer you more for say junk or jewelry, whereas blacksmiths will offer you more for, for tools, swords, and armor. Now when you go to a blacksmith, your items will take damage over time or begin to wear out. Blacksmiths can repair your items for you. For a little bit of coin, you can get your items back looking brand new. But overall, when you have items to sell, combat items, you go to a blacksmith. Blacksmiths can uh, give you some extra coin for those items more than a merchant can because obviously a blacksmith will have more use for weapons than a merchant will. So keep that in mind when you have a lot of swords, a lot of armor that you want to sell, you find a blacksmith and sell those items to a blacksmith. Another thing too to keep in mind, uh, gamers, when you're dealing with a blacksmith, a blacksmith can also forge new items. When another reason why you want to hoard is because you can find better weapons, the blacksmith can help forge new armor for you, new uh, boots, leggings, and also gloves. At the very beginning of this game, Geralt's armor looks badass, but it's actually not as powerful as it can be. You can either upgrade it, or I decided to give him brand new armor. It's a little funky looking, but it's a lot more powerful and it gives him a few extra ability uh, boosts. But I, the only reason I was able to do this was because I hoarded a lot of items. I had the blacksmith break down these items and I was able to forge brand new armor. So make sure you are dealing with a blacksmith when it comes to armor and weaponry. Now gamers, when it comes to all other items, say jewelry or food or por uh, potions, you're going to want to deal with merchants or shopkeepers. They will offer you a lot more money than blacksmiths will for these type of items. You can make a lot of bank very quickly. But also too is that merchants and shopkeepers hold food for you to buy to keep Geralt going in combat. So always remember, blacksmiths will give you more for weaponry and armor. And finally, merchants and shopkeepers will give you more money for food or potions. 
but also too is the fact that shopkeepers are the ones you want to go to when you need to buy more food or special types of herbs to form potions. So always keep that in mind when you're dealing with these people. Alright gamers, now when it comes to abandoned towns and abandoned tombs, you want to clear these places out very quickly. Inside, they do hold special types of items, but more importantly, when you clear out abandoned towns, people will move back into those towns. Give it about an hour or so, people will build their towns, but also special merchants will move into these towns that they will, and they only exist at those places that you secure. So make sure that when you clear out an abandoned town, return to it in about an hour or so, and merchants will give you special items that are only exist in that town. But most importantly, when you clear out abandoned areas, you may find a rare item or two hidden away in a corner somewhere. Now, in terms of these items, as you see right here, if you, as you notice, I have a couple items highlighted in blue and ones in yellow. Blue are master items. These are items that can be used in combat better. And yellow items actually have magical attributes to them. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these items. All right, gamers, now let's talk about side missions. Now, side missions are very important for you in this game. The reason why is because in side missions, you'll gain experience points faster, but also too is that you can gain special rewards depending upon how you deal with the people. Now, from what I've discovered, be overly generous with people. Don't forget, this is a place of, of war-torn uh, countryside. These people are down on their luck. If you decide to help people out and not ask for a reward, guess what? They'll still give you a reward, but also too, they'll give you bonus uh, rewards as well. Say for extra information, or hey, here's a special item that I have that I wasn't thinking about giving to anyone, but since you're such a nice guy, I'll give it to you. Also too, gamers, you will gain bonus experience points by helping these people out and for your kindness. So if you like to play as a badass, you like to play as someone who just doesn't care about anybody else, you can do that. But believe it or not, playing as a nice guy will earn you faster rewards and faster XP in this game than ever before. So be kind to people, do the side missions, be overly generous, and you will gain extra experience points for your work. Alright gamers, hope you enjoyed our first gameplay tips and tricks vid on The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. We're going to be doing a lot more, and I do mean a lot more gameplay tips and tricks vids on this game. Until then, feel free to subscribe to The War Room for more. Until then, we will see you guys next time here in the War Room.